For a few years now, the city of River, uh, Port Harcourt in River State has been dealing with a suit problem. We will be looking at the cause and possible health effects this could have on residents in Port Harcourt. Nigerians want a better government, but are we ready to work for it? Reviewing how turnout of voters' registration and collection of PVC in Ikiti and Oshun State. We want to know if Nigerians are ready to work the talk. And don't forget, we will be looking through and reviewing the big stories on our papers this morning. With that, we say good morning and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's a brand new day and uh, I'm excited about the conversations we're having this morning. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Bopo. Beautiful morning to you. Absolutely. Uh, we, of course, uh, will be looking at two major issues this morning. First of all, in River State, where uh, there's an ongoing problem that has gone on for about five years now, and that is the presence in the sky of a black suit. Uh, if you know any residents in Port Harcourt, you must have heard about this uh, problem for a very, very long time. It doesn't seem like much is changing. The River State government still hasn't been able to do anything or solve that particular issue. And so we're going to be taking a closer look at it this morning and also seeing some of the health challenges that um, are possible, um, you know, as a result of inhaling constant black suit. Um, and also we're going to be looking at the registration of voters as INEC prepares for the 2023 general elections. How far and how well has the Independent National Electoral Commission done? And of course, Nigerian citizens, um, how much more interest and how much more effort needs to be put in into getting people registered and ready for the elections. But before that, our top trending stories this morning. Uh, for everyone who has been social media active, you must have heard the Nigerian government has finally lifted the ban on Twitter. Uh, this happened uh, late yesterday evening in an announcement by the Nigerian government. And of course, it stated that as from the 13th of January 2022, the ban will be lifted sometime around midnight yesterday. Even if some uh, service providers, um, you know, slept off, you know, and didn't get the memo on time, but they eventually woke up sometime late at night and then realized that they were meant to lift the ban. Um, but, you know, the important thing is that the ban has been lifted. This was for about 214 or 215 days uh, that the ban was placed by the Nigerian government. And, of course, this has gotten a lot of reactions from the Nigerian people, um, you know, which are pretty much the same. You know, a lot of people have argued that we just achieved absolutely nothing. Uh, this was really just because somebody's ego was bruised in the slightest way. And funny enough, it wasn't an, an ego bruising thing. It was a person who felt that his ego was bruised because it was simply a very, very technical thing done by Twitter that they've done to, you know, th that they do all the time. But the person decided that uh, this is a bruise on my ego and I would not let this lie down. So I'm canceling it for everybody. If I can't have it, nobody else should have it. Um, and then eventually, you know, this continued Nigerians eventually moved and started using uh, virtual private networks. Um, you know, put a lot of strain on their batteries and, um, and whatnot. So that, was, the, that, that actually happened to me because I constantly yeah, wondered why, you well, know, the battery was running. Well, I didn't use VPN because I'm a, I'm a responsible <laughs> citizen. And my you president, did? My president said no Twitter and so I stayed off. You stayed off Twitter? Yes. But I, I would actually say I didn't stay off Twitter. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't actually. But... but, but <laughs> I didn't stay off. It didn't change anything. And that, that's the point. It did. No, what I'm saying, the ban. Okay. It did affect a lot of businesses. Billions okay. and billions and billions of Naira were lost to Nigerian businesses and, of course, the Nigerian economy because of this ban. Um, but did it really, you know, change anything with regards to the Nigerian government's reason for banning, the, you know, for shutting down the app or suspending the Absolutely. app? Absolutely. Absolutely nothing. Mm. It's pretty much the same thing with the closure of the border. We really haven't haven't achieved much, you know because you know? at the end of the day you ask yourself what's the essence of you know putting out that ban so if you say you're putting up the ban were we coming up with something else what exactly were we hoping to achieve at the end of the day absolutely nothing and, so and it was just like you said you yeah. i mean very correct it, it just felt like uh, someone felt not very comfortable with the well, whatever was going on and then of course i should actually put up that but it's really really bad because um, it's a means a medium where a lot of people have to actually express themselves i yes. mean uh, put out their thoughts and all of that and government actually came through that very very hot and yesterday i was in that space i mean 
I had to stay up till about 12 because it was supposed to be midnight. And then I really didn't understand that, you know, it had to do with service providers who didn't allow, you know, that to happen. But before yes, now, you're, you also. also, yeah, you also remember that before this time, we also had uh, 100 days. I think there was a time where the president, within last year, there was also a time before this time where we said that, you know, the Twitter ban had been lifted. Nothing really, really, really happened. It was during one of those speeches. I, I can't remember yeah. one of those presentations yeah, but, I mean, by the president. So there's that perspective where um, seven, pro seven pro uh, providers in Nigeria also, you know, uh, got called out for simply going ahead with a, uh, a government uh, suspension of, a, of a Twitter without challenging it in court uh, because it was seemingly an illegal order. You know that you know they could have challenged in court that they did it. They chose they chose not to. Um, there's that, you know, angle that people have, have mentioned. There's also the part where people have mentioned how much was lost, you know, to businesses and the likes across the country. Um, and also, you know, the question that I asked uh, earlier, what exactly did we really achieve from the ban on Twitter? And also, this really is... Um, a stereotyp stereotypical, you know, way that the stereotype, you know, a manner that the, the current Nigerian government acts. Um, it seems, and it's not even a, a, a it seems matter. It's pretty obvious that they have zero tolerance for criticism, zero tolerance for opposing voices, zero tolerance for anybody who thinks different from what they think, zero tolerance for anything that embarrasses them, and so they take whatever steps that are necessary to, you know, shut down, you know, uh, dissenting voices. If you remember in the previous administration, good luck, Jonathan. So there's no type of name, there's no type of insult, there's no type of allegation, there's no type of story that wasn't put on social media back then. And he did absolutely nothing because he understood that it was, the, you know, the right of every Nigerian to express themselves. And if they're upset, then, you know, they would express themselves and they express their anger. There's also laws that have been put in place, you know, to control the, um, you know, illegal use of social media or, you know, to, to control the use of social media um, that we haven't ever taken advantage of those laws or those, you know, um, 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 acts that have been put in place. Um, the because Nigerian government simply went on to suspend the app. Yeah, because if you talk about the issue of li um, libel, slander, and what have you, the, the Constitution also makes provision for that. So we constantly are in the situation where we say, oh, th there's fake news, there's um, slander, there's what have you. But if you also say it in our laws, uh, the laws have also made provision for that. So why yeah, do we absolutely. have to? So why don't you um, stay on the, with the laws and then uh, act on it? Now, on the other hand, a lot of people have said, there's, there's this narrative that's going on, we just have um, how many more days we're counting to the 2023 elections. Of course, we've already seen some persons who have started making interest, I mean, declaration of yeah. interest, uh, intention for becoming president. And very paramount is that of the... Uh, the APC. And some people are saying that it's just a few days to the elections. I mean, not necessarily a few days, one or two or three, but it's, but it's very close. And this, this is it because government feels like you have Twitter. Twitter has been used as a means to communicate across the globe. I mean, it's such a platform that you can put out, you know, market yourself, market your strategy, whatever it is that you have. And so everyone is actually looking out from that very, very particular yeah, post and, and from I the president. You know, um, nine out of ten people will tell you that's very likely to reason, you know, that it finally has been lifted because they need to use the app. No, but but, but what campaign. other time? I mean, what's the rationale behind the lifting of the ban at this point in time? Well, the, the Nigerian government says that Twitter has agreed to their terms and conditions. What that terms? They give them back Are we in the no? Give them back end access so that they can delete a person's tweet and whatnot. There's oh, a couple really? of things that they stated. But Twitter's statement, um, you know, that um, you know was put up um, by the Twitter policy account, said absolutely nothing about any agreement with the Nigerian government. It simply said Nigeria has finally lifted the ban on Twitter. Um, you know, Twitter is a, is a good app in Nigeria, something like that. Pretty, pretty short, simple statement um, and kept it moving. So um, it doesn't seem like there was any agreement or there was anything in particular that was reached with Twitter. Um, because in the first place, there really wasn't any reason mm -hmm. for, you know, any of all that. But um, that's where we are currently with that. And, um, and so everyone is free to communicate on the app currently. We'll move away from that and move to Abia State, where there was a very shocking, and I dare say embarrassing video of the governor of the state, Ukezi Ekbazu, uh, on a radio interview when he was asked about some infrastructure projects that he had, um, you know, committed to doing in the, uh, in the state. One of them was a particular flyover. Um, I, I think we have a clip of that uh, to share with you. I'm not sure if we can share that clip with you, but if we do, the producers will quickly uh, get that clip playing. But in his response, the governor of Abia State was simply saying, there you have it, it's, um, 
in the Igbo dialect. So, you know, for our listeners who are not Igbo, he was simply in response to the question concerning the particular flyover. He was, you know, mocking the people of the state and saying, you know, that he was the one who asked, uh, who said it was going to construct a flyover. Why did they stop him over a flyover? Um, and, you know, is it people that don't have cars that are asking him about flyover? Making some very, very derogatory statements like that, that how can somebody without car be asking him about flyover um, in uh, Abia State? But this basically paints a picture of what, uh, for me, of uh, the level of accountability that the uh, state governors believe that they owe citizens and they owe media organizations and they owe on-air personalities. Um, because in saner climes, this would never happen. And we're, we're also going to share with you, um, if, if, if the video is um, good, can we play it? Do we have a go ahead to play the clip? I think we can play it for you. Um, but there's also something that we're, we're going to share with you this morning. You know, side by side with the Abia State governor um, asking, you know, if, if um, people in Abia State that don't have cars, why are they asking him for a flyover? Um, we're going to play something for you uh, by the um, New Zealand uh, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. This came out in the year 2020 and went very viral. Uh, she was basically detailing the things that she had been able to achieve in her government in uh, the one or two years that she had been in um, power. So let, let's quickly share that with you. So you see a clear difference um, of a person who understands accountability um, to citizens. can run through uh, the last two years in two minutes. So here's some some key headline achievements, not everything, but I'm going to see whether or not I can at least get some of it in. So, start the clock. We've created 92,000 jobs, we've built more than 2,200 state houses, we've banned offshore speculators, we've planted 140 million trees, we've got better cancer care through radiation machines, pharmac funding, and created a central cancer agency. We've delivered cheaper doctor's visits for over half a million people. We're taking mental health seriously with mental health advisors and GPs and doctors clinics across the country. We've increased minimum wage to $17.70. We've hired 2,000 more doctors and nurses. We're building more classrooms and schools for 100,000 students. We've brought unemployment to the lowest rate in 11 years. We've got the highest increase in wages in a decade. We've helped 1 million Kiwis pay their bills with their winter energy payment. We've boosted incomes for 384,000 families through the Families Package. We've increased school funding so parents don't have to pay school donations and NCEA fees. We're breaking the cycle of family and sexual violence with massive boosts in funding. We've deployed 1,607 new police officers. We've made state highways safer. We've banned single-use plastic bags. We've started the clean-up job on our rivers and lakes through planting trees and fencing waterways. We've supported young people into training and apprenticeships. We've introduced a free lunches in schools program. We've provided more funding for addiction treatment beds and services. We're paying teachers, nurses and police officers more. We've resumed contributions to the super fund. We've set standards for rental homes. We've extended paid parental leave. We've ramped up the research, development and tax incentives. We're helping homeless individuals through more ho into homes through Housing First. We've banned military-style semi-automatic and assault rifles. We've introduced the Zero Carbon Bill. We've started fixing rundown hospitals. We've invested in public transport, extended nurses in schools to cover decile four and five secondary schools for almost 30,000 extra students. We've passed the Child Poverty Reduction Act and have lifted between 50 and 70,000 and children out of poverty. We've provided the first funding increase in 10 years to early childhood education. We've banned smoking in cars with children. So those are two minutes, about seven seconds there. New Zealand Prime Minister. You know, astounding for me, <laughs> astounding for me is the fact that she didn't have to do a script. Absolutely. She didn't have to do a Absolutely. script. She didn't have to read from any paper. So, so it came so out. You know, from her. From so, her. So, so two things. And, and for, for me, this is what that says. And once again, that, went, that video went viral in uh, 2020, I believe, or 2019. Um, what that says to me is a person who understands every single detail of what her government is doing. There's no question that you would ask her that she's not aware of. And then second, a person who, is, uh, who understands the accountability she has to the people who put her in power. The governor of Abia State does not understand that. No, no. It, it, apart from the governor of Abia State, I mean, it, that's just one. Because let's even assume that we have a, an opportunity where we have, you know, the governors of the 36 states come through, I mean, come out for an interview, right? It will just be almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. So this is just one experience out of so many that we have not had the privilege to have. That's what it is. But I'm really saddened when I saw that particular post. 
And the dialect, of course, is Igbo, and you have to get a translator, especially if you don't understand. It's too embarrassing because primarily the responsibility of government is that they provide basic infrastructure. Apart from security, you care for the people, the welfare of the people. Yeah. And it, it includes um, provision of basic infrastructure. And you talk about public goods. Public goods are those goods that, you know, responsibility, totally the responsibility of government. Because of the, um, you know, the amount of monies involved at the end of the day, I mean, it's not expected and how sensitive it could be. So it cannot be allowed in the hands of private individuals. And so government has to take care of all of that. So I started asking myself, do these people understand what governance is about when they go out to campaign for the votes and ask to be elected? Do they understand what they are getting themselves into? That's why, you know, it's so funny that you find uh, a governor constructing a road and then people begin to begin yeah, to applaud him. Oh, there's a road. Congratulations. And then they begin to say, it's like uh, you, have a, you have a parent. They're just basic things that should come to you just as a fact of just being a father and a mother to a child. Absolutely. I shouldn't be crying for food. I shouldn't be asking for shelter up to a particular age. So these are basic things, they're necessity. You should do them. It is not rocket science. We shouldn't be applauding you for constructing a road and, and having a even flyover. As basic as that, the governor of Abia State still doesn't understand that even as basic as something called a flyover. Basic. It's like it's like water. He still doesn't understand that he needs to even explain to the people why that has failed. As basic as that. So, if, so what happens if you ask him about health care? What if you ask him about maternal mortality? And you know, the, you, you know the funny thing about all of this is that a project that was flagged off in 2017, it brings us back to the issue of abandoned project. At the mm -hmm. time, we had a report that about 56,000 uh, 56, projects have been abandoned in Nigeria, which, we, we, I mean, we're looking at 12, 12 trillion naira. Yeah. 12 trillion, the entire country, because you have a project in 2017, and this is 2022 we're talking about, or 2021, and you, someone is asking you what's going on with that project, because that project has been budgeted for, the contract has been awarded, taxpayers' money has actually gone through, and then you think you should not answer questions. And I am really, really saddened, but I'm hoping that 2023 will be a time that we wake up. We wake up to the reality of holding our leaders accountable. I'm so, I was totally embarrassed. I felt very ashamed. And, and I'm asking myself, are we even making progress in, in a democracy as this? Well, it's, um, I, I don't know if, you know, we will be there in 2023. Um, but, you know, the, the idea for me is to ensure that um, these questions continue to be asked, you know, because I, I, you know, I had a conversation yesterday and I was saying that one of the reasons, you know, a governor would get to a radio station like that and give that type of very, very disgraceful response to a question um, on the most basic thing that his government should have done in six months is because the media organizations themselves, you know, would would succumb to the presence of a governor because they want him to keep coming because a lot of these organizations, you know, somehow, some way do not want to put pressure on the governor in his state. And we've, we've seen that happen so many, many times. There are certain states where the governor pays um, radio and uh, television stations monthly stipends, you know, to keep them going because of the economy. And so when the governor comes, you know, decides, you know, out of four years that one time he will grant you an interview, you can't poke him too hard. You ask him the question when he answers, you know, as disgraceful as that, you laugh with him and then interview is over. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done, you know, to push this idea of accountability um, from the media space, you know, the um, civil society organizations, and then the electorate themselves. Too much work needs to be done so that persons who are, you know, trying to get into office understand the level of accountability that you have to the people and they would not, you know, dare fail. Um, if you saw the video of uh, the British Prime Minister, that, that's been all over Twitter, uh, where he was, he was completely disgraced for attending a party in 2020. Uh, That's the level sorry. that their society has got into. Um, but we are still ag asking Governor Okezepa as we've uh, half hour with our flyover. And he's saying that... He's saying, you see, you that don't have colors asking me about flyover. That's, that's his response. I mean, things that should come by the virtue of um, you, by the fact that you are a citizen, that, by the fact that you pay your taxes. These are things that should come through for you. It's embarrassing. Um, those are, of course, our top uh, trending stories. Of course, uh, there's also an um, Instagram skit maker who was arrested by the NDLEA yesterday. That got a lot of people talking. Uh, I'm not sure if we have time to quickly run through that. His name, popular name, is uh, the General. Um, the key points, you know, with regards to this particular story, are the fact uh, uh, concerning how he was arrested. 
Um, and of course, it, you know, it's reported that they broke into his house sometime around midnight or even later than midnight um, on a, you know, seeming search operation. Um, it's not clear if they came in with a search warrant or not, you know, but in the in that encounter, it also showed that he was uh, fiscally abused by some of these NDLEA officers. Um, yes, there's a, a picture of that. But if, if some other thing that you would also notice um, the charge and the things that he was found with, the NDLEA put out a statement saying, you know, that, um, you know, they had word, they had intelligence reports of drug dealers and drug peddlers, you know, in a certain that location. Girl. They chased them, you know, it seems like they run into this particular person's house and so they followed them into that house um, and all of that. Um, but in that encounter, he was fiscally abused, um, mostly because Nigerian security agencies do not understand the rights of a citizen um, in any way. Um, and so um, he was eventually arrested and, um, you know, mock shots that we just shared with you showed that um, according to the NDLEA, uh, some of the things that we, they found were the drug tramadol and also marijuana. Um, but, you know, looking at the, you know, I understand that possession is a, a crime in Nigeria, you know, along with, you know, selling and, and peddling. Um, but uh, 15 grams of tramadol, you know, is, is a bit embarrassing to be arrested with. And also, you know, 14 grams <laughs> of marijuana. It, it, well, well in all of this, the, the question is, is it possible that we have our security personnel carrying out a duty in a civil manner? As long as yeah. the decision, I was just sharing that, with you a, my experience. Really with this, you know, I was sharing my experience with you yesterday where I encountered firsthand. Not like I haven't seen, but this was really traumatizing for me because uh, the police officer had to, you know, put out some shoot. I mean, he cocked his gun and then he was shooting. It was so scary at very close range. And one of the things I was trying to draw his attention to at the time where he was very calm was, well, you understand that you're carrying out your duty, but you don't, you have to do it. I mean, the fact that you put out that you, 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 you shot, you shot, you were going to shoot at someone. The only reason for me, I thought he didn't shoot. That happened in Lekki, you know, somewhere in Lekki. And the only reason that didn't happen is because I think he had too many witnesses. There yeah. were too many persons there, including myself. And it, it was really, I can't even forget the experience because I was, was just wondering to my, yes, it was. Yeah. So, so, um, so the, the, the challenge with, you know, the, you know, idea of respecting the rights of a citizen, you know, by security agencies in Nigeria um, is, is, is something that might go on forever, might talk about it forever. Um, they would never understand it because they themselves do not even understand, you know, the laws or don't understand the value of the Nigerian life. Um, and I've said it to, to you, I believe, that the Nigerian police itself, you know, which eventually has now transformed into the NDLEA, the FCC, and every other, you know, um, security uh, um, agency in, in the country, um, are seem, it seems like they are, you know, a, a, a cancer in the system. Um, you cannot fix the disrespect for the rights of the Nigerian by sacking one or two officers. There's so much work that needs to be done to Why are they so angry? They, they're um, very angry and very bitter. Very, know. very angry. I mean, I could see the anger and anguish. He was so angry. He was too angry. And I'm asking myself, why are you so angry? What's going on? And he really shot the gun. He was going to shoot it at this young man, but he shot it finally in the air a little bit. You know, just a little bit like this at well, close range. I'm hoping that we can do better yeah, because um, we can't continue like this and expect a different society. Yeah, we need to go. No one is stopping the NDLEA from doing its work, but you know, security agencies across Nigeria need to be more professional. Um, and um, there's no excuse, you know, for moving around with hard drugs in Nigeria. Um, if you're arrested or if you're found, you will be arrested. Those are our top trending stories. We'll take a short break. When we come back off the press, what stories are making headlines this morning? We'll share with you.